um, I'll keep this brief, but thank you, Adam and Film Forum, for hosting this. Um, I'm, when you reached out to me, um, I was more than happy to kind of take this opportunity to delve into watching a, a large portion of her work in order to consider what programs might work to show here in Los Angeles. Um, I met Uta at the Robert Flaherty Film Seminar um, in upstate New York in 2016, and I was really moved by all of her work that was shown there. Um, I feel like for me, she inspires a kind of um, a practice of filmmaking that I aspire to, a sort of, um, it feels like her filmmaking is very much a part of her daily life and her world and um, shaping a vision, a way of seeing. Um, and I feel like when viewing the films, we get to participate in that. So, um, yeah, the and she was already going to do a program at the Pacific Film Archive. Um, I believe they were titled First Person Cinema with um, the works of Margaret Tate and um, Marie Mekin, and who have been influential filmmakers for Uta. And Uta had discussed Margaret Tate's work at the seminar, and I got very curious about her work and the influence, and so this was also an exciting opportunity to kind of combine a few of those films with these programs. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank also Mike Stoltz, who's a, a regular Echo Park Film Center um, person, <laughs> who watched some of the works with me and had discussions about it. And it's also, I think, hopefully coming tonight or Sunday. But um, if Uta, if you want to <coughs> introduce your work. <laughs> So thank you for coming. Um, yeah, um, as Bridget said, we met at the Flaherty and um, this was a very special occasion to get, uh, I have seen her work for the first time there and also it was a kind of communication between the two of us about the work, the differences maybe and the similarities. So tonight um, I, I give a brief introduction for, for what you will see. I think we will go through the whole program and then uh, in the end we will be open for answer questions or, or get in the kind of conversation maybe. Um, the first film, I start immediately with the, with the films. So the first film is Paulina. So I work with a Bolex camera, a silent camera, 60 millimeter. And um, some of my films are silent, some are um, have sound. So tonight we have an example. So the first film is Paulina, it is silent. And then we see a, a work by Margaret Tate. Um, portrait of Gar. It's also a portrait. Paulina is a portrait. She's my godchild. And then we see uh, Half Moon for Margaret. This is uh, Margaret is Margaret Tate. And after she passed away in 1998, <coughs> um, I dedicated uh, the film um, to her. So, um, and after that, we see her film Color Poems from 1976 or uh, 74, and then a longer one. Uh, to be here, which I filmed actually in your country, in the US, uh, in 2013. Uh, and this is uh, uh, silence and, uh, and sound is alternating. So, um, <coughs> yeah, the, the first film is uh, a kind of, maybe a little bit an example for how I work. So it is, um, you will see Paulina when she's very young, you will see her when she's older. So obviously I had no clue when I was starting filming with her that I will at any time make a film out of it. So I am also a collector. Sometimes I'm filming, putting these things to the side and then on some point I decided I will make a film. So this is how <laughs> Paulina came into um, reality or, or, or uh, really become a film. and. Um, the next one, Portrait of Gar, is very interesting because it was one of Margaret Tate's first film. It's from 51. So if you see it, you will maybe don't think that it is from that early time. So she was um, trained as a doctor and she was in the Second World War working as a doctor in India. And then she decided to become a filmmaker. So she went to Rome to the film school and um, 
actually she first thought she would be she wanted to become a writer but then she shifted to become um, a filmmaker but she was always also writing poetry and there are some books of her published uh, in a um, self-publisher, I don't know, she published it by herself, uh, because when she came back to <coughs> Scotland, uh, Scotland was not ready for uh, these kind of films, so she had no financial support whatsoever. She made about 30 films in her lifetime, uh, and uh, only one, I mean one was a commission work, a very tiny one about Orkney, she is based in Orkney, she was born in Orkney, she went back to Orkney, but um, she, she realized one long feature film in the age of 73, um, which actually when I was visiting her in 95, um, we were looking at some work which was not in any distribution, so there was a bunch of her films in distribution in the co-op, in now Lux, but at that time <coughs> Filmmakers Co-op, and um, um, so for me it was very interesting someone who was really <laughs> devoted and never gave up make, making films even it was very difficult um, she has a you will see it, it's a very personal approach to her subject the portrait of Gar is actually her mother and um, and for me it was unique that somebody made this film where at that time in, the f in, in, in Rome there were, we have Dorsolini, we have uh, um, De Sica, we have the, all these big figures but she stayed on her very personal interest in filmmaking <coughs> which was always connected to a kind of I would say daily life little things you know little things which we sometimes think are not so important so I see myself in this tradition and um, I think we go through the program now and then we can speak later. So enjoy the program. Well, I guess we can start maybe with the, the broad, I guess I was thinking just about this notion of portraiture mm -hmm. and um, that portraiture is necessarily something obvious and something that by design excludes Mm -hmm. it, it cannot. It, it can't include everything that it portrays, whether it's a person or a nation. Um, and from, so I think about like where where do you find these boundaries in your portraits um, for all of these films? With Paulina, you know, I think about it as being maybe this person who's with being a teenager. Um, and the film for Margaret. I guess that had me thinking about what it is to make it a sort of dedication mm -hmm. and that being a sort of autobiographical process for you. Um, and then with the last film, yeah, that's the one perhaps the most where I think about what, what is invisible and what can't be seen mm -hmm. and that's part of the power mm -hmm. of the film. Um, so, yeah. If you just yeah. want to sort of riff off of... Um, <coughs> yeah, it, I mean, I was thinking, this. Um, of course, there we have a long film and we have, a short, we have short films. Mm -hmm. So the different... Uh, what, what is it doing if we see a short film like a short song or a kind of essay? Um, this was this was interesting for me because of course I have never seen this program before so it is also when one is curating a program uh, something happens between the films and is created so um, yeah I don't know um, obviously for, uh, short forms have a con have a different concentration and not so much maybe the overall um, can I say not opinion is wrong, but it is it is just this moment or, or short moments together, and a long <coughs> film, of course, is more giving a, a pace and it is a, a bigger, um, yeah. So and of course, seeing to be here with you here in Los Angeles, I was also thinking it is it you know usually when I'm in the states I'm more on the other side of the coast. So, um, and then I look, and this was the first time that I was traveling to the Southwest. So this was really first time, first impression. And um, the East Coast was more 
um, not first time because I have been, I have been there several times before. So the different approach, and now I'm sitting in Los Angeles, and this is actually <laughs> your surrounding, and um, it was it was interesting a, a little bit from here to look to the other side. Um, yeah, so this was just my for me interesting to to look. Um, yeah, I don't know. So maybe um, maybe we can open it to, to if somebody has a question well, or impressions. Or, so or we maybe were talking we about we were talking about color poems, the yeah. narrative film before the screening, and you. I was asking because I was trying to look up something about um, this the poem that's in the beginning, and it's talking about soldiers coming back from the Spanish Civil War and. Um, you had mentioned that that was sort of like this thing that starts starts this poem, the film poem, and is kind of like left behind, and or yeah. sort of, but of course like remains throughout. And so I guess in to be here, you start with this America, with the beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I mean, was that something that you actually set out to begin with? Yeah. I mean, was that like something that you wanted to? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it also makes me think about just what, like, ideas of beauty and, you know, is there an ethics of beauty to be found? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was not so much thinking because it was, yeah, in a way, but um, for me it was interesting, you know, when I, my work title actually was American Beautiful, but I, of course this was not the title, could not be the title. So, um, but when I researched on, uh, on uh, first I was maybe got in, uh, was getting more familiar with uh, Catherine Bates because where we stay, when we stay in the East Coast uh, at Cape Cod, there in Falmouth, which is very close by where we live, Robert and me, then um, the public library is called Catherine Lee Bates because she is born there and she she was uh, she lived there. So I I suddenly went into this um, what is her history. So I found out, of course, about America the Beautiful, the song. Then then that she was it became a, a professor at Wellesley College. Then this brought me to the Seven Sisters Colleges. Then I was at Mount Holyoke invited earlier. So without knowing anything about the history of the Seven Sisters Colleges and um, and that uh, the connection to Catherine debate. So so suddenly there was a little net starting, you know, points which were connected. Mm -hmm. And then of course um, I was impressed of her uh, her life. Uh, she was a professor at Wellesley and she lived with a woman for 40 years together. She was also a professor at Wellesley. And when I was asking people who wrote the lyrics of America the Beautiful, almost no one knows that it was her. So um, suddenly it was all, all these contradictions about patriotism and, uh, and female identity and, and the positive connotation and then it brought me to the 19th century and I found a lot of powerful uh, things, uh, especially with the women in, uh, in New England. And so, yeah, and then, then I went to Mount Holyoke back and uh, I was invited to show films and then I had the idea asking who wants to come tomorrow at one o'clock and we will maybe speak about how you feel because I was envy when I was first there I thought great to do study at the women's college and so there were these the diverse, the, the diverse I mean all these different nations together and we spoke and so I taped it and filmed them also and uh, yeah so this this was a little bit the starting point you know but but this was more research ba not really research based but um, a little bit and um, building up and then of course I was also I was reading uh, Uncle Tom's hut and <laughs> for the first time and so but then sometimes I went to the places and I filmed something completely different not not going into the the, the first I mean the impulse why I went um, to places and look what I can find. Oh, the Shakers, you know, I was, all, when I first went, I was impressed, the Shakers, sa same thing. Emily, a woman, founded the Shakers. She was an unalphabet, she couldn't write, she couldn't read, but she did this powerful thing and it mm. became a big community. And so, so I tried to bring in this kind of um, 
yeah. But then I thought it is a kind of starting point. It, it became my starting point, and so this is also why I put it in the beginning of the film. You know, the travel starts from then, and yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question about Margaret today. First yeah. Well, thank you for introducing us to her work. That was like, at least for me, it was a revelation. Um, it felt like she was off of the Orkneys, like inventing experimental, the language of experimental film or some kind of film for herself. Um, not drawing so much on other experimental films, on maybe on poetry, on the history of poetry. Um, but you said that she was distributed by uh, filmmakers co-op, but yeah. was she exposed to what was going on in the American cinema and experimental film elsewhere? Was she pretty much an isolate? Um, I think she was, I don't know how much, I think, yeah, she was following, but um, because first when she came she lived in Edinburgh, and she was close, of course, to the festival there and knew the people, but she was never shown, so she founded her own Rose Street Festival. Um, and I think she was, but she always stayed back from, she didn't want to be fixed, you know, she doesn't want to be an experimental or an avant-garde filmmaker. So she really kept herself away from these classifications. And um, so she, she was really picking up names or things which she found interesting in a really broad um, spectrum so um, I don't know how much she was following later I mean when I met her she was already um, 76 and um, we didn't speak so much I mean we, we spoke only in the in terms that when when because I had seen also her long feature film and then the short films and and then she told me there's no I mean the feature film is a real feature film the camera person said you know she was just the director and but she emphasized on the point that the, there is no difference between her short films and the long film so she doesn't want to she was really refusing this kind of so I don't know I think she was familiar with the work of many people but uh, of course she lived in the Orkney Islands and a little bit away from, but she went uh, step by step more away, you know, pulled back, so kept her own. She had a little old church, she called it a kirk, and this was her studio. And, um, and when I met her, she was actually going more into writing scripts and for longer mm -hmm. films, and not so much anymore. But then she took the camera out, we did something together, and she she actually finished then her last film, Garden Pieces, where, where, where she put things together which she had filmed before. And, and so, yeah, it's very special, you know, in terms of how we think about who, which filmmaker belongs to which tribe. She also writes poems, and is she even maybe more well-known nation like, mm -hmm. nationally as a, po as a no. writer? No. no, 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 no. She, she, she went, she turned a little bit more in the, in the end of the 50s towards poetry because uh, she, it was really difficult for her to, to make films. Mm -hmm. And then I think it, after a little um, doubts or, you know, frustration, Mm -hmm. She came back and mm -hmm. decided she continues to make films. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a special. And I, of course, she. Um, I like the way she. or her tone, how she speaks, or, or, or what she's creating. It is also. Um, yeah, it's difficult, you know, it's, it's, it's not easy to put her in a, in a, she's, she's more, I mean, she said this very famous quote where uh, the cinema I care about is on the, at the level of poetry, so she really wanted to place herself uh, into the, the poetic, um, yeah, boom, I don't know what, world, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's, she's sort of, oh, she, I read, read something that she sort of all of cinema is sort of defined first through the poetic, and the rest is kind of secondary. Yeah, her. yeah. Do you do you relate to the idea of the poetic in your practice? I guess I, I was thinking yeah. about it as like more like physical, the way 
Yeah, I, physical and spatial as opposed to her seeming so much more based in kind of like thought and el the element, the yes, cinematic element. I think so. I think that, that I think there's a difference between us. So she, um, mm, I mean, it was interesting for me also the alternation because mm. I think the. The emphasis, uh, I mean, also the editing in camera process, the improvisation or the intuitive. Uh, I mean, she also she doesn't go out for with the script, but when she is, how she's filming and how she's placing it together and how she's editing and how she's connecting it, I think much more to a thought or content more consciously. So this is not so much. I'm I'm more energetically working and and putting this or it's. My, she also makes, of course, the the. Um, music, the music uh, <laughs> comparison, but I think sometimes when one is working more visual, it, it's it's quickly that one goes also to the music, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. try to compare it or, or try to place it, you know, away from um, experimental cinema, which is more reflected on the media or playing with the media. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe a main difference. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So with the poetic, of course, I, I sometimes when people ask, you have to place yourself, and I, I also use the word, but but um, I mean, I never wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. I'm really not right. a writer, right. and she was much more conscious about words, <laughs> writing, and, um, mm -hmm. and and you know the how can I say me me metaphoric mm -hmm. when 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 she's filming something, how she speaks through the image in a different way. I think than I do, so I don't know. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit about the the combination of kind of editing and camera? And, yeah. And you know, I noticed that there are kind of recurring people that are in your lives too. That maybe there's a portrait that consolidates around one of them, or they also kind of drift into other pieces, pieces that yeah. are more kind of broad. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. Um, so one one element, of course, when I'm filming, it is more mm -hmm. the editing in camera first. So I try to find the rhythm, or or I'm thinking. I try to. I, I know that I will go later to an editing table and work on the table. But in the moment, I try to find the rhythm while filming. So it is really these kind of clusters which are more in camera edited, and then the montage. When I, I mean especially in, in Paulina, when I'm placing, um, intercutting things mm -hmm. from the now to footage which I had collected. Mm -hmm. So then it's really a montage, classic maybe montage work. Um, but I like the two elements of this, the moment and, and really to create the, the rhythm in the camera. And then later, it's not so much rhythmic, uh, when I'm when I'm thinking of montage, it's really then more the moment when two different things are coming together, what they are creating. Yeah. So, so. and then of course the sound also. Uh, um, I have a digital tool to tape sound, so um, the whole work with the sound comes on the editing table. Yeah. While you're editing it. Yeah. Also. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a, I developed. A, I'm editing the image on the Steenbeck, and I have my computer, and I'm editing the mm -hmm. sound parallel, so mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. because they they can go with time and minutes. Play. Yes, I can <laughs> okay. push the button. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. You're you're physically cutting the work print. Yeah, I'm wow. physically yeah. cutting the work print. Yeah, it's um, that's uh. Doesn't happen that much anymore. Everyone's, no. everyone's gotten into the uh, digital editing. Yeah, I know. But are you, are you I'm a conservative. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I am. Um, I'm an editor, and I yeah. you know, grew up with that. So. Yeah. So I, I sort of miss miss the um, the physicality of it, and the fact that it's you know you, you make a spice and you spice it together, and you don't have to worry about the computer crashing. And you, <laughs> yeah, and also I don't have different versions, you know, it's just, it, it's always where you are. So it is not, I can go back, oh yesterday maybe, yeah. of course you can bring it back, but yeah, um, yeah it's different. Uh, have you shot anything in Los Angeles on this trip? No. 
I don't ah. brought my, I didn't bring my camera. Ah. No, was, uh, I thought this time. <laughs> no, I have some no, no <laughs> filming. <laughs> oops, 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 oops. Yeah. Okay, so um, more questions? <laughs> I can say anything. Yeah. Uh, I was curious about um, the device, I guess, of the fades the way that it was almost, um, and uh, you may have answered this question about in camera, is that um, the quick fades were seen almost physical, like the, like it was the lid of the eye of the camera over and over again, almost as if it couldn't look very long in anything. Yeah. And I, I was curious about you experiencing, experiencing that or doing that as you're shooting, you're like closing yeah, well, I'm doing it while, while shooting. Right. I mean, I can just open and close the aperture right. and I can also change the focus. So that's a kind of rhythmic element all also. And I'm, of course, I think I like these kind of very short touch or very brief moments. So I'm mm -hmm. believing in the... Um, yeah, what is creating if you see something very short or or uh, or hear something very shortly? So uh, there are two ways. You know, we can go, we can look at something very long, go into it very deep, or I think we can just the surface can speak to us. So I'm a surface person. Mm -hmm. It's almost like blinking. It's like bl yeah, it's like blinking. And also, you see it and you don't, or you see it and you don't, and you have to. No, a little bit, a little bit hesitating sometimes, not not just mm. on there. Yeah, but it's funny how in that in that way, that scene with kid in stripes going up and down that hill, you never want to leave that spot. Yeah, <laughs> one doesn't want to leave that spot somehow. There are places like that also. Yeah, that's what's right. the poem in uh, the Tate film? Yeah, I don't know. It's a long card. Oh, it's really a one with the color of the white and the color. Yeah, in the end, I think it's actually. I I think it's, it's hers. Hers. Yeah. It, it's, I, mean, it's I think it's hers. Yeah. yeah. She starts with something from Lorca, but in mm -hmm. the end, the terra firma part. I think it's 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 her own. Yeah. Good. In the, the Pauline film, one of the things that yeah. really struck me was we're used to seeing photographs of a, of a child and then recognizing the expression in, in, in the photographs in the film. <coughs> but you capture something which is that there's qualities of bodily motion that a child has that are still there when someone becomes an adult. But there's, there's odd ways of moving a leg or a shoulder or whatever. Yeah. You're, you're, you're cutting ways that you, you realize that that shared animal motion is, is, the, is the signature of that person and that, that that's something really unique that you've got there. I think right. it's also, of course it's in the filming, but it's all a little bit also editing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're, you're yeah. noticing those things yeah. and putting them together, yeah. 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 So I mean, when I was collecting, when I was filming, as I said in the beginning, I didn't know that I will ever make a film about her. So it was actually when I shot the black and white when she was about 14 years old visiting me. And then when I looked at the footage, then I got the idea, I will look at the other footage, starting editing and making a film. So sometimes it's an impulse which comes years later. Yeah. Um, to return to like the in-camera editing technique, I also found that it wasn't always just really fast, but there was also, it draws out as well, like there are moments where it's fast and then there's a slow shot. And then I really like that type of play of, of rhythm and it kind of makes me think of, of language in the poetic or like the cadence of how you shot it in that way, in that moment. And then um, I just admire it. Um, I don't know, just kind of like the decisive moments which you decide to pull the trigger and mm -hmm. then when you stop, start and stop a shot and that sort of relating to um, the cinematography of getting like a constellation of different angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I was, I, it's not really a question, but I was just 
wondering if you could talk about how, I don't know, like how you approach, because I, I, there's different types of movements and, and, and then I could, there's like a playfulness and it's, it's not, it repeats, there's a repetition and then there's like motifs that you return back to, but there's also like movements that are like one-offs like and it feels like oh there's a this sense of discovery in this one movement that mm -hmm. because you're playing with it for a little while um and i don't see it in the other films so then um i wonder if, if you could just speak on sort of like that process of discovery while shooting yeah i mean that's difficult you know you can imagine difficult to speak because what you described is nice so i think I, um because why why, why doing it it is on it, First, I have the camera always in the hand, and no tripod, so it is a kind of extension <coughs> of my body, and I'm also moving around. So it is a little bit going around, and and then things can happen. And of course, it is. I mean, if 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 it is working, that my surprise or my discovery is also communicating with you, then I'm happy. So so it's also, um, of course, it is a kind of. Pre pre I mean, this is the strange thing with filmmaking, that you film and in this moment it's the present, now we see it later, but if, if this, this moment of uh, a present discovery and the present is, is communicated, uh, communicatable, um, yeah, I think then I'm happy if this can happen, so because it is, uh, of course we capture things, um, Especially also with Paulina, I mean, it, it, we know this all from photography. When suddenly we see some, we see ourselves young, and but um, it is this magic moment in film, you know, that, that that the memory and then becomes again a present element. So, and I think of course it is a kind uh, because it is more the improvisation also. How 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 I would describe my approach is is a kind of improvisation, and I'm somewhere. I don't know if I take the camera or if I will film this. So something has to happen, something has to communicate with me. You can call it reaction, but I, maybe it's nicer as the communication. Good, I think. Thanks, Bridget. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Place. <laughs> I get some air in here now. <laughs>